Today, I'm making a Pinot Blanc Pie Mint with orange blossom honey. Let's get started. So I got this Pinot Blanc wine kit from my local brew shop and I wanted to make a pie mint. I don't have great access to different or nice varietals of grapes. So wine kits are kind of what I normally use to make my pie mints. A pie mint is a hybrid between a mead and a wine. We call it a pie mint because you use wine grapes alongside honey. For this recipe, I'm using Pinot Blanc wine grapes that have already been treated and pressed. And I'm using orange blossom honey as my main honey source. I ended up having to do some extra things with this mead and take some extra steps. You'll see those steps here in a few minutes. So here is my recipe on screen. This is what I started with, and you'll see by the end, there's an adjusted recipe, so you'll have to watch until that. I will go ahead and say, I bought this wine kit on clearance, and there's a good chance that the grape juice base is probably past its prime by a little bit. You'll notice the color of the juice is pretty dark when it's normally a little bit lighter, but I still gave it a shot. I sanitized all of my equipment and poured my juice into a large container. I then blended in my honey and water with it. The starting gravity for this mead was pretty high at 1.142. The Red Star Classique, which is a solid wine yeast for reds and whites, often ferments up to about 15% ABV. I started this brew at such a high gravity, hoping that I would end up with some residual sweetness. And well, spoilers, I didn't even get close to fermenting through everything. So, you'll see that. I added my nutrients at the correct time, which was a semi-staggered nutrient schedule, and I let this thing start fermenting. I noticed after about a month that things were really slowing down. I took another gravity reading, and I was shocked to see that it was only at 1.060, which was so sweet. I knew that the yeasts were done because they had flocculated to the bottom, and they were clearly done with the brew, so I had to come up with another plan. My plan was to make a dry traditional mead and blend it with this overly sweet one. So I bought some Beauchade Carrot Blossom Honey and made a mead that would sit at around 13% ABV and be completely dry. There's a separate video on that mead, you can go find it on the channel. I stabilized that mead after it went dry and did a blending test with the overly sweet mead. I ended up taking three cups and doing a split of each mead as you see on screen. This was sort of a tasting uh, experience to figure out what ratios I wanted. One of them was one third overly sweet mead and two thirds dry mead. Another was two thirds overly sweet and one third dry. And the last one was three quarters overly sweet and one quarter dry. I ended up liking the ratio of two thirds overly sweet and one third dry mead. It brought the sweetness down without completely taking away all of the nice honey character that we were getting and the pie mint and the brightness from that. The honeys really complemented each other and I was pretty pleased with that. So I ended up taking that ratio and blending the two into a new batch. I racked them into a new container with that ratio and added a medium toast French oak spiral. I let that set for a few weeks and then I decided I wanted to add a different kind of oak to get a darker profile, so I added one ounce of medium toast French oak chips. The brew sat on the oaks for about eight weeks in total. After this, I did more tasting and determined it needed some more acidity and tannin to balance out the sweetness. So I added about one and one half teaspoon of tartaric acid to bring up the acidity. I also added about 1.5 grams of this berry wine tannin to help with some more tannic value and mouthfeel. This brew has taken a lot of work and has honestly been sort of tough. The final gravity after blending was 1.025. Now that number is probably wrong and I have definitely messed up the calculations for my ABV, but I'm fine with that being a little bit of a mystery. We are now going to hop into the tasting for this mead after its big journey. All right, here we are for the finale. This mead has been through a lot, um, kind of unintentionally. I started it off as a regular pie mint thinking, oh, it'll be a little sweet. But through the saga of it not finishing dry or anywhere near dry, <laughs> I had to really um, figure out what to do. So stopping at 1.060 gravity was insane. I'll kind of dive deep with that. But let's go ahead and get to the tasting portion because I know you're ready for that. This mead is not very clear. And I will be the first one to tell you, it's not the clearest brew in the world. It does 
look good. The bottles I got look really nice and I'm proud of those. Um, I'm not too worried about the clarity, to be quite honest. Let's open one up. So I got quite a few bottles from this brew. Um, I'll show you a picture after I bottled it. Bottling is an easy process. You just basically take and use a bottling wand, bottle it into whatever bottle size you want. Now, the moment of truth, you've been waiting for this. What's it look like? Well, you saw through the clear bottle, but not super clear. Oh well, that's all right. Um, look, uh, the aroma check for you. I almost forgot the words for that. It is very, still very um, honey forward, sweetness. It's got some acidity, acidity now because of the um, tartaric acid we added. You can, <laughs> smells weird. You can smell the viscosity of it, the thickness of it. It's a thick brew. Ooh, all right. Let's taste it. Mm. Still, obviously very sweet. But the tannin balance that I adjusted with the oak, um, the specific uh, powdered wine tannin I used, and the acidity are combating that bright sweetness, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it really clings around. The oak is a nice rounding effect. It kind of really makes you feel, I mean, it's like a, a big hug, for lack of a better term. It feels like a big hug from the sugar, from the wood, from the tannin and the, the acidity. It's pretty well balanced. It does lean forward on the sweet side, but it it is not cloying. Our final gravity right now is roughly 1.025. Now that is also, uh, ABV wise, it has been totally messed up because of dilution and there's math to figure that out, but I'm, I don't care that much to do the math right now. It's like a huge, almost um, no water like viscosity, mouthfeel. And it's really good. It's absolutely a dinner time, after dinner time uh, mead. It's not something you're gonna sip during because it is it is pretty sweet. And um, I think that if you were to make something like this, I would probably uh, try to keep my ABV or starting gravity lower and attempt to maybe have a little sweetness. I'm pretty sure that my yeast just kind of quit early. They should have kept going, but they didn't. I think it's really good. It's only seven months old. For something that is roughly probably about 14%, it's gonna need another uh, I don't know, six months at least before it really starts to calm down. And so there'll be a tasting in the future for this one. But I think it's pretty dang good. Here's what's so important. I have balanced this brew and I did a lot of extra work to make it good. If I had stopped at the point where the primary was done, 1060, it was just pure sugar. There was no tannin in there to make it enjoyable. There was no acidity in there to really brighten up and um, combat the sweetness. It was unbalanced and really playing with the different methods of uh, achieving more tannin and acidity are, are what saved this brew. So if you're making a brew and it ends too sweet, it's fixable by looking and adjusting acidity and tannin. This one was a lot more work than I thought it would be though. So. A lot of people go, if I just cap my yeast out and I'm left with a lot of residual sweetness, then I don't have to worry about back sweetening. It's true, but holy cow, I would have had so much more luck and had a better time going through and just dr having a dry piment and then back sweetening. So that's what I would do next time if I did this again. So that has been this brew from beginning to end after blending with our original, you know, piment orange blossom blending with that dry carrot blossom. The dry, the carrot blossom mead is its own video and you can find it on the channel. Maybe not right now, it'll be out in the future. So you gotta kind of be patient for that, but it's a very fun uh, brew as well. Now, some of you might've noticed I'm wearing a pretty sweet looking shirt right here. This is from the sponsor of this video. I'm, I've been so lucky recently to get a couple people who wanna sponsor some videos. So 
This, this shirt is from today's sponsor, <laughs> sponsor who is into the AM. Now these people are t-shirt makers, premium t-shirt makers that make lots of cool designs. I really like this one, so I, I went ahead and ordered it too. I'm a big space guy. I need, not many of you know that about me. Um, they make a lot of high quality print shirts. Not just like the look of them, this thing looks good, but also it's pretty dang comfortable and clean and I like the fit of it. So um, you can check out, I have a link below. They have lots of fun things. You guys have seen a lot of my silly um, clothing that I wear on this channel. So one of my other ones I ordered was this one right here. I am a big all over print t-shirt kind of person. I've got my star sand shirt. I've got my own personal all over print. This one, I've got some cheetahs on me. Got the rainforest, I got all the cool things here. Um, they make a lot of amazing t-shirts that even make them for dogs. I mean, check out this wonderful photo of my dog wearing this t-shirt. Spoilers, they, they don't actually make t-shirts for dogs. Um, I ordered this one because it was uh, a little too big on me and... Um, <laughs> I'm the man now, I left a dub, but I did it with no So I, I ordered the wrong size, but this is a 4XL. Go check out um, Into the AM. They are a great company and they are sponsoring this video and you can save some money. Use my code to go through and in your checkout use code, I think it's manmade mead and uh, it'll help you out and save you some money. So there's also a link below if you want to use that. Thanks to them. Thanks to you for watching this video. Uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, do all those things, and uh, support the channel. We've got a big milestone coming up, hopefully in the future, with 50K, and there's a giveaway for that. You can find stuff on the channel for my giveaway. So I hope to see you in a future video. Yeah. Cheers. Look, I'm the man now. I'm the man now. I left a dub, but I did it with no hand out. I'm the man now. I'm the man now. I left a dub, but I did it with no hand out. No handouts. These spoon I'm going in. Uh.